Of course. Of course, the beginning of our show, some jabroni's bogus car alarm has to go off. Cool. You know, the car alarms are like, today are like the boy that cried wolf. You know, they just, they go off at the drop of a hat and people get so desensitized to them yeah, going yeah. off at the Nobody. drop of a hat. They don't know, they can't tell the difference between an annoying an annoying car alarm going off constantly or a real car theft it's like uh, you can't tell the difference anyway welcome to our show um, I am today I am drinking Yinling traditional lager uh, America's oldest brewery Pottstown Pennsylvania hey. or is it Pottsville Pottstown, I think. Pottstown. No, it's Pottsville. Why do I keep on saying there is town? There Pottstown. I'm sure there is. There is a Pottstown. Just like there's a Springfield in every, yeah. every corner of the country. And a Monroe. Original amber beer. Traditional lager. America's oldest brewery. 1829. Yeah, 1829. 29. Maybe. Traditional lager. Pottsville. Right. I should I should All think right. I should think of Hooterville from uh, what is that Petticoat Junction Petticoat or is that Green Junction. Acres? Hooterville. Oh, Hooterville. Green, Green Acres, Acres, right? Green Acres. I should think of that. I should think of Hooterville, so I remember to say Pottsville, Pennsylvania, okay. and hopefully I'm I'm holding the bottle properly for the camera person. There it Shake is, Yinling. It Shake it. No, I don't shake it. What do you want? Well, I'm gonna move it. Oh, move it. Move okay, it. okay. Okay. There you go. It is dry, breezy, and cool today. Thank God, after God knows how many days of chilly rain that we've been having nonstop. How many days of chilly rain have we been having? We're gonna have a few more. <laughs> oh, really? Yep. Yeah. Oh, my God. Gonna have a few more. Yep. Very frosty. I had it in the freezer for 45 minutes. I thought you were going to say 45 days. No, and then it would explode. Yeah. It would have exploded. I, I had it in the refrigerator for a few days, and then I put it in the freezer. Um, I just want to say seven lucky bells for this week's progressive discussions. All right. And everything we discuss politically is part of our series, Crapitalism in a Conch Shell. You heard it right. Crapitalism in a Conch Shell. And there's the conch. Neptune, <coughs> are you there? Well, how can you enjoy beer? You're the king of the sea, man. You're, you got water all around you. Mm. All right, all right. I'll stop being a wise guy. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah, Kathy Griffin. Yeah, that was not. It was very, uh, very much uh, in bad taste, and uh, she she went way too far. I think so. You know, I hate uh, right wing corporatists uh, quite a bit, but you know. Even I agree that that was uh, definitely uncalled for. That photograph was very offensive. Um, and um, okay, yeah, I'm gonna do a, Ch a Chisler's Hall of Shame real quick, get that over with, and then make my statement. Okay, thank you. I will enjoy this beautiful weather. All right, now. <clears throat> Chisler's Hall of Shame, Little Chisler's Hall of Shame. Mm -hmm. The company, you probably know, Marie Callender. Marie Callender makes various frozen foods, mm -hmm. found in your frozen food section, of course, mm -hmm. uh, the supermarket. Uh, unfortunately, their pot pie is, um, I'd say, a rip-off, I, I, I would say uh, 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 
false advertising because there you have to push aside the potatoes uh, to find the vegetables and then you have to push aside the vegetables to find the chicken and uh -huh. apparently the same thing goes for Marie Callender's soups this is her if it really is a her it's probably some corporation I wonder if Marie Callender exists no. uh, her Marie Callender's pot chicken pot pie pot pie style soup ah it, that's what it says chicken pot pie style soup well the soup is the same as the pot pie I only found like three or four chunks of chicken breast in the entire can mm. but does it surprise me not really it's typical American food industry it's typical corporate America they have contempt for the customer. Forget about quality is job one, like the old Ford commercial. You know, uh, actually Ford is actually pretty damn good. It's it's no longer found on road dead. It, it, they've come a long way. And they didn't need any auto industry bailout. But anyway, I, I digress. Uh, corporate America is about misrepresentation on, in their advertising, false advertising, uh, cutting corners, ch screwing you, chiseling you, and uh, flat out lying. Uh, they don't think long term. They don't think about the long term effect of pissing off customers. Mm -mm. You know. Um, How many ounces is that? Man, Probably mostly water. It's a 14.75. Oh, wow. 14.75 ounces. Uh -huh. uh, oh, by the way, all these uh, opened up yesterday. Yay. After the remodeling. It, look, it looks lovely, but they still have only one to two cashiers. <laughs> but it does look lovely, I do I do have to say. I'm well, very happy. You have there. to go in and check out the, uh, the uh, surplus. I made a joke when I walked in. I said I should have brought my copper divining rods because I have to find where everything is now. Everything is rearranged in the store, oh, well, you know. which doesn't surprise me. Yeah. They do that. that. That's a retail trick. They want you to go moseying, moseying up and down the aisles yeah. to look for things over and over and over again so you end up buying more. Right. They, you can't fool James P. Madonna. Uh, but they did have a whole freezer loaded with uh, Sea Queen uh, stuffed clams, which I was happy about. You know, the clams oreganata. I had. With the breadcrumbs and the. Uh, act by accident yesterday. Atkins? Oh, by accident. accident. The uh, young lady did shopping this week. You gave her a list. Gave her a list. It gave her the. Uh, you don't. You don't write chicken scratch like a doctor's prescription. Uh, I mean, and you gave you print, her the right? uh, the sales items from the uh, Shoprite paper. Paper. Yeah. Why do they call it a circular? It's square. And uh, in anyway. the Shoprite paper was salmon cakes. Pre One dollar fifty cents per pound. They're probably small. They weren't small. There were three of them. They were ample. They were ample, but they weren't a dollar fifty. They I weren't. only wanted a dollar fifty per pound. What they happened? were for something. Oh, they 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 made you buy a a a, 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 a larger volume. Yes. Uh, so I ate them. I ate oh, two for dinner yesterday. Did you freeze the rest? Oh, I ate the other one last night for my dinner How at seven o'clock. But they were ample. Were they good? And they were, they were heavy. Oh. They were good. Oh, they were good. See, this is. The I put a little ketchup on each this one, like a. Uh, oh, okay. Like a, what do you call that sauce when you put it on shrimp and everything? Cocktail sauce. Cocktail sauce. Well, like cocktail that. sauce is nothing but ketchup mixed yeah. with horseradish. Yeah, exactly. And tartar sauce is mayonnaise, relish, and lemon juice. There you That's go. all it is. Yeah. You can make your own. Anyway, shame on you, Marie Callender. 
But then again, shame on you, uh, American food industry, uh, and um, also the quality of American made appliances uh, has a very, uh, <coughs> very uh, severe built in obsolescence in it. You know how many app appliances uh, my sister uh, Lisa purchased that burnt out in a very short amount of time that were, you know, Hamilton Beach. Uh, Sunbeam and all these companies a lot anyway and what about the uh, the no stick oh uh, the Gotham I tossed it my Gotham pan went in the garbage it well, was only is, it was only non stick for the first week mine is sticking now and I cl uh, I had someone clean the bottom right where that aluminum distributor is oh yeah there's an aluminum distributor of heat yeah. on the bottom of it, but it's still burning. Hey, if you, if you got, gotta, love, it got, gotta love my cast iron pan. Excellent heat distribution. And the blacker it gets, the more nonstick it becomes. Um, the only thing is uh, the ladies tend to complain that it's too heavy. Big deal. deal. <laughs> well, they, they, they should do some exercise. It is heavy. You know. Uh, but anyway, uh, I just want to say that my co host and mentor and the very founder of Newsletter Censored in 1977, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman, gave me some uh, uh, black velvet pirate pouches, and one happened to fall on the floor. I haven't found a use for it yet, but I'm sure Donald Trump can use it to warm his uh, his dick or his uh, his gonads. You know, it's small enough. But uh, ha ha ha! Levity bells. Levity bells. But um, I want to say that I, on a serious note, that I uh, last night I I on Facebook. I, I clicked unlike, unlike, and I unfollowed the, the organization Our Revolution New Jersey and, and Our Revolution Bergen County, uh -huh. which is the county we live in, that I am from. Dr. Bill is from Pennsylvania originally. Now, not Pottsville. No. I unlike them because they consider themselves uh, pro progressive Democrats, and uh, too many, too many uh, establishment. Uh, you want to call them moderates. You want to call them middle of the road. You want to call them blue dogs. Whatever I call, I'll just call them establishment. Too many establishment. Democrats and neoliberal Democrats are calling themselves progressive. To be progressive, you cannot be establishment. You cannot be part of the two-party system. You cannot uh, take money from the fat cats and then owe them favors in, in the future. You uh, have to rely on donations from your average citizens. And like you know, yeah, you, you gotta be an honest politician. Oh, yeah, yeah. I know that's a misnomer. Yeah, to be to be a true progressive, you have to be a true liberal. Which, if you look, if you if you read it in uh, the definition in a the dictionary, they are they are both very positive descriptions, definitions. Um, most people do not know their political definitions at all. They get communism confused with fascism, confused with theocracy, confused with socialism. Uh, uh, progressive, uh, progressive <laughs> liberal is more or less a democratic socialist, like Scandinavia, like Northern Europe, and like and and and, and for the most part like Bernie Sanders except for the part where 
he decided not to run as an independent and he endorsed Hillary, Hillary Clinton. Now the problem with the politicians on the uh, Our Revolution New Jersey and Bergen County page is, the, is that these politicians are, um, they claim that they're progressive, but they are Democrats. You know, this guy that they keep on promoting, that they, they, they insist is progressive. Uh, what's his name? Wo Wozinski? Wo Wozinski? Wozinski. I can't pronounce it. Woz... He's a, uh, a, a, a senator. Uh, you know, a state senator. He, he's a New Jersey state senator. Yeah. Uh, he kind of like works with like Barbara Bono and all those people. Yeah, and he worked with the uh, the old uh, the old woman who him and, and her began the investigation of Bridgegate against Christie. They initiated it. Yeah. Okay, so he's but he's a but he's a Democrat. Yeah. He's not an independent. Oh. All right, so our our revolution, New Jersey. Uh, well, you know, New Jersey and New York are the Democrats in New Jersey and New York uh, are establishment. They're establishment Democrats. I mean, look at look at the former Governor John Corzine. He's a billionaire that, that used to work for Wall Go Street for Goldman Sachs. Goldman Sachs. I mean, how... That Phil Murphy how worked, worked for. He did? Yes. How progressive can you possibly be if you're, if you're filthy rich and you worked on Wall Street for Goldman Sachs and then you decide to run as a Democrat? Mm -hmm. How progressive can you be? Um, you know, it's... Uh, but this is the New York... New Jersey area. Um, it's very. Um, it, it, it's overrun with, with lawyers. Is uh, 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 like like there were cockroaches. It's a very densely populated part of the country. There is got quite a bit of uh, business going on and corruption and all that stuff. And uh, it's nice. It's nice that he started the Bridgegate investigation, but. I would not call him progressive, like our revolution, New Jersey calls him. No. Now, if he was an independent, that's different. But I listened to his video of, of him being interviewed, and he sounds establishment. He sounds like, uh, you know, uh, another Nancy Pelosi. Uh, 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 you know, uh, bipartisan. He didn't say bipartisanship, but he sounds like a person that um, that wants to compromise. And 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 he um, he didn't say a word about taxing the rich. And we need to tax the rich and cut taxes on the middle class, like Bernie Sanders does when he raises his voice and hollers mm -hmm. quite often about uh, taxing the rich and getting rid of the establishment but this guy does, didn't say a word about that about yeah. any of it um, he kept on saying well uh, I, I, I have to look into like somebody bro someone brought up uh, about our pathetic uh, um, public transportation system no, in New Jersey it's, it's, and the United States. The rail system is is pathetic. It's a dinosaur. It's in shambles. Uh, we were supposed to have funding going towards public transportation, a new rail system, and even uh, more importantly, a light rail system to help alleviate the traffic and the pollution that cars produce. You know, and, and, and if you look at China and Japan and Europe, and you look at their rail system, and light rails, and subways, and high-speed bullet trains, and then you look at the United States, it's a laughing stock. But according to Wozniski, he says, 
uh, it needs to be researched. I have to look into it. If, no, you know, no, you do it. You prioritize it. You upgrade. The rest of the world did. Even mainland China uh, uh, has a modern transportation system, high-speed trains mm -hmm. and rails. China has it. You know? We have Amtrak, okay? The dinosaur train. Yeah. The one that... Uh, it's just one step above Choo Choo Charlie. <laughs> and uh, what the hell was that stupid candy? Good and plenty. Good and plenty, good and plenty, good and plenty. Yeah, that, that garbage I used to eat as a kid. It's pathetic. It's embarrassing. If there are, if there are, if we had a modern transportation system mm -hmm. that was upgraded with light rails, we would have less cars and less mm -hmm. buses. People that could not afford to buy a car would not have to go into debt to lease a car or finance a car with one of those crooks. Those car dealers. Or choose became between going shopping for their kids and car insurance. There you go. Mm. Like like the priorities w w would be accurate, would be uh, justifiable. Instead of, um, I mean, New Jersey is an absolute ripoff. The car insurance, I mean, you name it. Mm. It's a, uh, and th <laughs> that's why you can't, it's very hard to find a true progressive politician in New Jersey and then again New York. Now, uh, I believe California passed the uh, single payer universal um, health care and New York is, uh, is trying to pass it now. I heard someone, one state or city or something did. I don't remember which one. But the states, on a state level, are going for single-payer universal. I don't know how they're going to fund it if they're going for it. Mm. Um, just like medical and recreational marijuana. Uh, I was reading an article today about how hemp uh, absorbs radiation like a sponge. Mm. You know, and... Uh, neutralizes it. I'm telling you, it's, it's a miraculous plant. It's, it's probably... It's a plant right out of God's hands, for God's sake. It's, it's like... It's, it's like... It, I mean, you could do an entire talk show on marijuana. Uh, naming all the assets, all the good points, mm. the benefits of it. It's so di diversified in, in uh, the, the wonderful things that it does. Yeah. But anyway. But uh, its association with the top tier drugs will keep it as it is, you know? Yeah, well, Some you know. Some states are allowing medical use and yet they'll throw you in jail because the federal law will not change. State laws are changing, but the federal law federal is not. Federal right. Well, when I was watching this documentary, about the um, the Middle Ages, uh, they were, they were going from one subject to the next, um, and um, they they pretty much said that the tyrannical Catholic Church back in the days of the Middle Ages, they were pretty much neo cons, neo conservatives. They were they were extreme right wing nuts that were against science. Absolutely. Against any kind of any kind of education or knowledge, mm -hmm. and uh, very corrupt. The popes <laughs> were very corrupt and uh, very wicked. They were the opposite of what they were supposed to represent. Yeah, because they were in charge. See? Yeah, but but the Bible, it, it's sort of like uh, it's sort of like uh, right wing evangelicals that the Republicans love so much. Mm -hmm. They don't really know the Bible. No. They use it as a front. They push it aside and they have evil agendas that have nothing to do with the Bible. Mm -hmm. My throat is hurting me 
because of this change of weather. Mm. This weather has been not good with all this chilly rain and, and it's just it's been going from warm to cold so this is why I sound the way I sound I didn't think I I, I, I last week I didn't think I sounded that great either my th I was I was a bit raspy but anyway um, so yeah um, don't call yourself a, 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 a progressive or a liberal, well, progressive, progressive. Uh, a liberal can also be a, ne uh, a neoliberal, but, uh, you know, don't call yourself a progressive unless you really are one. And um, if, if the DNC nominates another corporate shill in 2020, well, we're doomed because we will get Another four years of uh, His Royal Majesty. Well, that you know, that's what happens if they pick, if they nominate another corporate show. It just goes from one to the other. Change of party. Same garbage. It's business as usual. Business as usual. See, right now, right now. The business of America is business. The top, the 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 well, capitalism is. You might as well say it's it's always been rigged for the rich since the Industrial Revolution. It's like it's like having two parrots perched side by side, and and each parrot has different color feathers. That's all. That's the Republicans and the Democrats. They're both yeah. they're, they're both parrots. Yeah. They, they 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 both owe favors to the same people. Right now, from what I I understand about the uh, the Paris uh, climate climate agreement agreement, uh, uh, there's a, another big article out there that mentions how much money Exxon Mobil gave Republicans to uh, turn their back on the Paris climate agreement. Mobil has been for years anti -climate. putting out the propaganda against uh, climate change and anything of that nature that would interfere with their smokestack. Oh, are they the, one, are they the ones that started that uh, rumor that uh, on the planet Earth the climate changes every 20,000 years anyway, regardless? Uh, uh, they may have, but uh, I don't think it's 20,000. I think it's, I think it's more like 75,000. Yeah. Something like that, uh, and, and something about the axis, the, last, the Earth's axis, the to last change, the last climate change or ice age that we had. The ice, the glaciers, came right down the middle of the country and all of the Midwest, the West, right down like the Mississippi, on the left-hand side of the Mississippi, right, and all west. It was all one glacier. Well, the Great Lakes were, were one-time glacier water. That's it. Frozen. Yeah. Uh, hey, I learned something new. Oh, boy. I, 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 uh, I watched another documentary about carbon dating and uh, um, archaeology. And guess what? You cannot carbon date stone. So if there's a stone like the pyramids of Giza, let's say, or the, uh, the Sphinx, you cannot carbon date stone. And you cannot carbon date uh, stuff that is not real old. You know, because real old. they uh, there's um, new scientists have um, come to the conclusion that the uh, pyramids and the Sphinx may be much older than previously thought, based on certain other things that they found and uh, but I left the best for last um, you know uh, science is at the point where right now they're they are mapping out every fine detail of the human brain right down to the nerve cell and they and they um, feel that in the near future they will be able to download everything in a person's mind onto an artificial intelligence, into a, uh, 
a fax, a, a, an artificial facsimile of the human brain. So when you croak, you don't have to croak. You don't have to drop dead. You can become uh, like a cyborg or an android or something. Uh, um, um, they already have a, an artificial skin with nerve cells that enables people with uh, robotic prosthesis, you know, a hand that can grab and to feel. And, and right. to feel. They, they, they already have the skin, whatever you want to call it. Hey. That, where you could feel, it has nerve endings and, and, um, and, and they mentioned implants that can be put in the body, uh, in the brain to uh, enhance uh, performance of different body parts, including the brain, and, uh, and it just goes on and on. Well, I mean, what's going to happen when they get, when these artificial life forms get to the point where they say, hey, my creator was weak. He's obsolete. He's obsolete. Unless you and I'm gonna take over. Unless, unless, I. Well, you know what? It's not a bad idea. Let, let's say someone, but someone is um, a scientist. Let's say he's a genius, <clears throat> but he's getting up in years. He's an old geezer of yeah. ni ninety years old. Oh. He's got one foot on the banana peel and the other foot in the grave. Now they could download everything on his mind into, into an artificial uh, uh, brain, a machine, and then he can live on for, did you, forever. Did you ever see Robocop? Yeah. Well, maybe that, maybe that sort of stuff happens after a while. You begin to want your humanity back. In other words... Instead of being a machine. Well, if you... I wonder machine, if they can, man, I'm I, a machine. I'm a machine, man. I wonder if they could replicate, if if they can acquire, if they could uh, um, acquire real feel. I wonder if they could replicate um, a sexual uh, arousal. I wonder if that could be. Well, done. why we already have sexual arousal? No, but I mean, I mean, if you're if you're forced into uh, transferring to an ar artificial intelligence uh, cyborg or, or android. Well, that's what I'm saying. I mean, maybe they could replicate an erection. Maybe uh, you orgasm. will miss your humanity. So you And you will want to strive for that again. Instead of being a cyborg. Yeah, or, or like Lee Majors. Uh, a or Mensa, Mensa, yeah. or what, what was she called? The Million Dollar Woman or something? I never liked Jamie. Her. Yeah, Jamie. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Lindsay. Uh, Lindsay uh, Wagner. Lindsay Wagner. Yeah, she was not my type. Lindsay Wagner. You know. Uh, uh, oh, there's a new Wonder Woman movie out. Yes, there is. Yeah. Um, and uh, some say it's not good. Some say it is. Well, you know, critics. Uh, you know, a, cr a critic's opinion is not always written in stone, like restaurant critics. Some of those guys get paid to say what they say. Yeah, and, well, it's not good. You know, and give you five stars for your establishment. or They or, do that online. Yeah. You can't trust uh, those things. I hear Google gets their palms greased <laughs> to put you on the first page of a, of a search. Oh, well, that's been going on for years. That, that doesn't sound too honest. You ever look up on the left, the left hand side, and see how see how many uh, they went through? Want to hear Two billion funny? six hundred and seventy five thousand. You want to hear something funny? Every every web every website that I look at, if I, let's say I'm looking at certain products, as soon as I then later on, if I log into Facebook, guess what I see in, on the side? What you were looking the at the same shit I was looking at on a different website. <laughs> I'm telling you, this crap at the where's the shell? This capitalism is so underhanded and and sneaky. <coughs> Excuse me. But they got you, man. 
They got you. You, you, all of your, it. your computer. They got you. All of it by your IP number. Well, you know, you know the technology. The technology of being able to order anything you want at the lowest price with free shipping is wonderful. But somebody out there is keeping track of you. Yeah, it's the same thing with um, yeah. with this friend of mine. With this, uh, he's got he's got caregivers now helping yeah. him out and everything. Yeah. And he's uh, probably going to have to go on Medicaid. And some woman calls him up on the phone and says, uh, "You know, you, you, I have to deny you uh, caregivers because you have life insurance. They consider that an asset, an income, right? Income. Assets, yes, like a bank account or stocks and bonds or an annuity, yeah. yeah. So, 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 in other words, uh, you won't have uh, the guy won't have money to get to get buried. They'll have to make salami out of him, right?" Or, you know, cure him. Ridiculous. Rub salt like prosciutto, hang him up with salt all over him. Yeah, right, exactly. Mummification. Why not? He wouldn't have money for mummification. Right. Yeah, you know, you know. But uh, it, the government feels that if you get over $1,000 a month, that you're wealthy enough to pay for your own health care. Mm. It's insane the way they think. It makes no sense. Well, that's for sure. The uh, the laws uh, surrounding uh, social services are illogical. Like old man Leonard Nimoy over here. Illogical. Right. How could a person that is receiving, let's say, $1,050 or $1,005 a month how could they pay for their own health insurance or pay out of pocket for medical? Right, they can't. Health care. How could you possibly do it? You can't do it. Can't do it. But of course, Republicans are very famous for uh, uh, sabotaging. sabotaging anybody who gets anything for free except their big boys and girls. So you could be sure that when, when a dumb law like that is uh, involved with social services that there might have been a bipartisanship compromise and the Republicans had their dirty hands in it and they decided that hey buddy you're too rich to get Medicaid That's but correct. then again nobody wants Medicaid see this is the whole thing yeah the doctors won't take it Medicaid by itself Doctors don't want it. Right. You, you had to go to an outpatient clinic at the hospital. Uh. No doctor would take it. Then, when Obama started the Affordable Care Act, then people on Medicaid had some dignity because they were able to see a private doctor mm -hmm. and a dentist. They, they were they were able to go to a private doctor's office and have some dignity instead of being herded like cattle in an outpatient clinic. So, you know, but Medicaid by itself is a failure. The, the, uh, the workforce, uh, what is it, uh, through unemployment, they think they call it... Workforce. Uh, jobs, um, workforce, uh, 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 um, It, 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 they give it some name where if you're on welfare they want to put you back to work right. whatever the name is it sounds like you know don't get too comfortable buddy well, we want to train you and put you back to work well mm -hmm. guess what the government only gives you up to four thousand dollars to go back to school your average technical school wants tuitions like ten, fifteen thousand, yeah. sometimes more, you know, and then and then what happens is um, the the Amer wonderful American companies take the the uh, the students that are in their last semester and have them work for free like slaves. Interns. So the interns so they can get school credits for their right. 
for their teacher, for their school, mm -hmm. before they graduate. So, and then when the interns graduate, guess what? They get another truckload of interns, mm -hmm. and they work for free. Mm -hmm. Between that pri and privatized prisons, it shows you just how uh, 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 how vile capitalism really is. Mm -hmm. It shows you how vile uh, Mr. Gingrich and Mr. Clinton were when they instituted that law back in 1996. Well, Mr. Clinton. That if you were able bodied and you were on welfare, you had to work for your stipend. Stipend, yeah. yeah. And I remember all the jobs that Bill Clinton supposedly stimulated. 22. Million. Most of them were like hamburger, hamburger flipping jobs. Mm hmm where even if a married couple both worked at McDonald's, you couldn't make ends meet. Right, because the object of, uh, of, of uh, entitlements for programs like that is not to make the person so that he's no longer needing a welfare or food stamps. That's not what the object is. The object is to keep them coming. They don't want to. They don't want to give them the money in the first place, but they make it so they ca they have to continue getting it. Well, they did that to poor Bob, uh, uh, um, poor Mass Bob. He uh, he uh, he uh, he was he. Uh, they. I don't know if it was his relatives or <laughs> somehow he had a guilt trip. Ugh that he wasn't a productive member of society, a productive yes, yes, citizen. Yes, yes, yes. You know, he has a disability. He has a disability. Right. So they made him join some workshop program where uh -huh. they... I don't know if they had him cut paper dolls out. I don't know. He did some some um, menial task in a, mm -hmm. in, a, in a workshop for like a dollar an hour or two dollars an hour. And then the, the, hand, the disabled people, mentally challenged people that were exceptional and did really good in the workshop, which was like a, sw a sweatshop because exactly. they, they abused him. They yelled at them and everything. Exactly. They put him down. The ones that were, they felt were exceptional, they stuck him in a, in, in a, in a fast food restaurant. Hey, that that's an excuse for the government to take away their Cut socials. Cut you off, buddy. To cut you cut off, you off, and take away a person's social security disability, and they will do it. They will do it. I had a big debate with Ken Create. He's trying to say, "Oh no, 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 no! You can work part time. They won't touch you." I says, "Ken, that is furthest from the truth. They will." That is a slippery slope. Th they, you will get a letter in the mail stating that your. Uh, Social Security, uh, a disability must be. It, it is time for us to reevaluate uh. your Social Security disability, and they will reevaluate it and uh, uh, tell you you does are no. Does he know? Does he know the? He don't know. He don't know this. What What's the name of the law now? It just it went out of my head. Kidda. Kidda. Yeah. Does he know the law, kid of the law? No, he don't know. That if you work, you are no longer disabled. So if you get... You can still be disabled, but as long as you work. So that... That's how the Social Security so, has so, the law. So that sneaky, that sneaky government program called the Ticket to Work and... Yes. The Ticket to Work and Self-Sufficiency Program. That's... It, it, that's what it's called. It's made to eventually get you off SSI or uh, Social Security. Disability. So they give it this fucking positive name, like like the Right to Work or Clean Air, uh, uh, whatever act or some yeah. bullshit or the uh, 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 um, yeah. They give it. The Republicans give these these schemes uh -huh. positive names, yeah. so you don't think negatively of it. Right. Just think about it. Ticket to work and self-sufficiency. Right. Once you get and then the, you know what you know what they do? They tell you in a letter. 
you you do not have to worry about your social security check it will not be affected mm -hmm. it will not be affected if you get a part-time job uh, some someone showed me the letter it it actually says that that is a blatant lie from the government your social security check will not be affected if you get a part-time job. Right. It's a lie. Right. It's a lie. A stinking lie. And it's all from Republicans. From sleazy pieces of shit like Paul Ryan, Mitch McConnell, and, 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 the, and, the, and those like them. You know, just like... Yeah, probably something like... I don't know this for sure, but probably something like two... Two years down the road, then they come at the, after you and they say, you know, you've been working here for two years, uh, no problems, blah, 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 blah. you can make it on your own. Even if you That's work, they do. even if you only get 12 hours a week, part time. Yeah. Which is probably more hours than the Republicans actually work in, in the Capitol building. In oh, Congress. they don't do any work. Come on. They, they work much less than part time. Right. And for their 175,000 a year, not counting perks. But anyway, yeah, they will tell you, ah, you have held a job, and then you'll say, yeah, but it's only I only work 10 hours a week. It's it, 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 I only get minimum wage. We're hama hama hama. We're working 10 hours a week, and then they'll ignore you, and they'll say, but you have held a job. Therefore, you are no longer disabled. Right. Oh, forget it. If, if you're a disabled person who joins that Special Olympics, and they see uh, they love that, and they see you in a wheelchair going, you know, going like like the Flash, yeah. you know, racing somebody. Oh, forget it. You'll lose your disability check. Oh yeah. You know. Anyway, they love that. Let us sink our teeth into these readings. Right. I know we were very long-winded, but they were important things to bring up. Because I want people to be prepared when the next election comes. Mm -hmm. I know there are, there's something coming up June the 6th. In New Jersey. This is only for New Primary. Jersey. Primary. Primaries. Right. Kathy well, Griffin. Kathy, here we go. Well, that's a good start. Has apologized for going way too far. She didn't know that when she was taking the photograph? On a performance art project where she held a model of a bloody, decapitated head designed to look like President Trump. Way too far is putting it mildly. But in a strange way, Griffin's shameful stunt might have given Americans their greatest moment of unity since Trump's unexpected election. When people began reacting in outrage on Twitter, Griffin at first responded with defiance. Then Griffin started getting cold feet, sending out this tweet. Obviously, I do not condone any violence. I am merely mocking the mocker in chief. Yeah, but it was pretty graphic. I, I saw the photo. Later, she deleted her tweets and took down the image. <sighs> it's, uh, the photo represents a new low for the comedian, who is known for new lows. Well, if you're gonna, if you're gonna, if you're gonna tell jokes about the president and his administration and his cabinet, and then you're gonna you know, uh, uh, do satire and ridicule and heckle them. That's one thing, but this was very offensive. I saw the photo. But perhaps what is uh, most shocking and unprecedented is that she actually admitted she had done something wrong. Until now, I would have guessed she doesn't even know the meaning of crossing the line. But she seemed genuinely remorseful when she said in a Twitter post, I am sorry. I went too far. I was wrong. She admitted that the image was too disturbing 
and wasn't funny and that she understood how it offends people. Griffin had little choice but to apologize even though it didn't stop the overwhelming blowback on social media from famous and not so famous people across the political spectrum including Anderson Cooper her CNN co-host on New Year's Eve. She lost that job. She got fired. Yeah. Yeah. He tweeted, For the record, I am appalled by the photo shoot Kathy Griffin took part in. It is clearly disgusting and completely inappropriate. CNN announced Wednesday it has terminated its contract with Griffin. Trump responded as well. Griffin should be ashamed of herself. My children, especially my 11-year-old son, Baron, are having a hard time with this. Sick! Former first daughter, Chelsea Clinton, <sighs> shared similar views. This is vile and wrong. It is never funny to joke about killing a president. She tweeted. Yeah, let, let alone in that way. Yeah, cutting off the head. Actress Debbie Deborah Messing, a Hillary Clinton supporter, said it wasn't right when people hung, lynched Obama effigies. When Obama was in office. Oh, you said, oh, I thought you said Obama. No, Obama. Oh, okay. Obama. Okay. Just as what Kathy Griffin did isn't right now. Mitt Romney sent this out. Our politics have become too base. Griffin's post, post descends into an even more repugnant and vile territory. The massive backlash aimed at Griffin, tasteless stunt, might have actually brought the country together to defend President Trump. Mm, gosh. Perhaps for the first time. Even Griffin herself seemed to understand that she had done something very, very bad. Shock artists like Griffin are merely posers hiding behind the guise of humor while avoiding the hard work of coming up with real thought-provoking comedic material. They just continuously blur the boundaries of good taste. The social media storm that shut down Griffin represents a small but important step in preserving what little civility we have left. Yeah, we don't have much left. That's a photo show. Yeah, and it wasn't just his head. It was, it was uh, his head and face was covered in blood. It was blood. All blood. It was, it was uh, beyond just capitation. You know, it's I don't know. No. You know, I mean. It's one thing to mock <coughs> on Saturday Night Live, tell great jokes, use satire, political satire, stand-up comedy, whatever, sit-down comedy, but not this was uncalled for. So, you know, I mean, I'm don't get don't get me wrong, I despise the right wing with a passion. I probably despise corporate CEOs even more, but you don't do this uh, to the President of the United States. You don't do that. And that's it. This little life lesson begins with a confession. For the past two weeks, I have abetted bird killers known for their ruthlessness and stealth. And I'm not talking about house cats. Feral? 
These cold-blooded killers. Cooper's hawks. Cooper, no. Are the snapping turtles that I live, that live and lurk in the natural area behind my house? Well, oh, yeah. There's 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 snapping turtles up here in the northeast, and and they they get quite large, and they snap. They probably uh, they probably grab uh, ducklings and, and go goslings. It's a baby goose. Marauding the small lake like U boats, <laughs> the boats. turtles love to feast on baby mallards, wood ducklings, goslings, and cygnets, aka baby swans. Oh, that's bad. They're expensive. Swan, uh, you ever see a black swan? How beautiful they are! These snappers have been known to pull down a full-grown great blue heron or a great egret on occasion. Yeah, they um, they're like they're like the alligator or crocodile of the, of, the, of the north. And then slowly devour the huge bird at their leisure. The, um, Let's face it. It's a turtle eat bird world out there. And it's all part of nature. A, a muskie is, is a big predatory fish. Looks like a barracuda. I don't know if you've ever seen them. A muskellunge. This year, like years previous, the female snapping turtles arrived in my yard in late May to lay their eggs. The turtles dug holes in the mulch and proceeded to deposit eggs in my yard. Bad. Bad turtle. Bad well, turtle. Well, they're 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 predatory and they're carnivores. You know, I yeah. mean, uh, and so are alligators. They they do what they do. Hey, cats do what they do. Yes, sir. Yes. You know, they do. They're predatory. They're they're not they're not vegans. That's for sure. I, I thought I thought somebody purchased uh, an apron. I need for a. You. you see that piece of uh, the drama there? Yeah. No. Nah, right let's there. not let's not discuss it on the show. Let's discuss it later. Well, it's it's. it's you tell it's, me later. I need it in the front. Oh, okay. All right. I'm 36. Doing very well in business. I'm single. And deeply in love with a 58 year old woman. Deeply? She has been a neighbor since I was in grade school. She's petite, pretty, intelligent, cheerful, and looks my age. Uh, looks his age. He's 36. Oh, oh, she looks good for She's her 58, age. She yeah. looks good for her age. Well, that's good. Petite? I don't know if petite is is a, a good point, unless the woman is very ample in, in the chest area, you know, or or is just really that cute or beautiful. I mean, it doesn't, you know. My parents moved to Florida when I turned 27. And I bought their home just so I could be near her. Yeah. On my 33rd birthday, I begged her to cook for me. Begged? Her to cook for him? He had to beg her? We had dinner. Please cook for me. Please cook for me. Please cook for me. I mean, this guy sounds like he's... And too much wine. And ended up in bed. Of course! Booze is the the best aphrodisiac a woman could ever uh, partake in. 
we don't live together Not and well. she often tells me to find a younger woman Ah, that's right, the big age difference. Well, you know, I mean, uh, you know, uh, uh, there's a lot of guys out there that are older, that like younger women. Uh, what do they call them, a cougar? Those, yeah, the those females, are, yeah. cougar male. Yeah, that, 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 I have tried to gift her a car, jewelry, oh etc. Don't tell me he went to Jared. But she has refused them all. She tried to, uh, she tried to buy her love. Our families are against this. I'm going crazy trying to convince her I love her. Eh, they're not, they, well, the age difference is, it's, it, it's not, well. When I told her. It's not like she's 21. When I told her I've you know, loved her he, since middle school, she he, laughed. He's 21. It's not like he's 21. She laughed. My parents say I am insane, though they love her dearly. Am I? Eh, I no. Know. When people are in love, they sometimes think emotionally rather than rationally. <laughs> This guy probably looks like a real, real dope. All right, I think I got a, I think I got everything on that one. Yeah, he probably looks like a real doofus. The way he sounds, the way he's, the way he's uh, talking, you know. I can't. I can't picture like a normal, <clears throat> good-looking, a cool, a cool thirty-year-old guy talking like that. You know, he's probably some freakazoid. You know. Whoa. In his article, "Military Wins Big in the Trump Budget Plan," of course, Stephen Olmacher perpetuates two serious misunderstandings. He states that Social Security's trust funds are projected to run dry in 2434. It's an excuse for them to steal your Social Security. And Medicare is projected to run out of money in 2028. No, no, it's a lie. It's projected if they steal it to run dry. Well, that's what they want to do. They want to turn that money over to Wall Street so that the banks have more money to speculate. Yeah. Oh, you mean like the Zionists that run the banks in Wall Street? I don't know if they're all Zionists. Well, regardless. They, they are crooks. They're, they're crooks. No matter what they are. They are crooks. That's correct. Yeah. And the, and the people that are involved with the military industrial complex are also crooks. Very underhanded. The newspaper has a responsibility to convey valid information, not common misinformation. These programs are not going bust. Social Security has two sources of funds, payroll taxes and the Social Security Trust Fund, because it, uh, it uh, gathers interest every year. The Trust Fund. Okay. Americans will continue to work and pay payroll taxes essentially forever, determined by the number of people working, their productivity and their wages and salaries. If productivity increases and wages rise accordingly, payroll tax revenue will rise. It could. <sighs> or it could not rise enough to cover the baby boomer retirees. The Social Security Trust Fund is Social Security's rainy day fund. When payroll tax revenues exceed Social Security payments, the balance goes into the fund. It is predicted the fund will run out of money in the 2030s. This is only a prediction. 
and depends upon productivity, wage growth, and government policy. Social Security payments come from current payroll taxes. When you and I receive our payments, they will not come from money the government put in a special account with our names on it. Instead, our payments will come from the payroll taxes other people are paying at the time. Even if the Social Security Trust Fund does run out of money, the vast majority of Social Security payments will be made because they come directly from current payroll taxes. Medicare, though not identical, is similar to Social Security. Mm -hmm. Neither is going broke or can go broke as currently structured. Yeah, the, uh, any, any, anything contrary is a right-wing propaganda. Right. Right. They are like, um, they have the mentality of a, of a car dealer. Republican politicians, or uh, or or, or a, a carnival snake oil salesman. Well, you see that they can't get anything done because they have not. They have this built-in uh, no taxes for the rich, and it gets in their way when they try to do something for the middle class or the lower class. It conflicts. Yeah. You see what is going on with Obamacare. It's got eight years behind it of trying to destroy it, and look how many, get rid of it, and, look and they how, can't do it. And look how many decades Republicans have been uh, um, discussing um, uh, the bogus trickle-down economics, and, and, and never really, nothing really trickled down. Regarding Trump pressures allies to increase NATO spending, how embarrassing for us to witness President Trump at the NATO conference last Thursday. He can be seen pushing other delegates out of the way in order to be in the front of the line in the picture-taking process. Yeah, it's all about him. Then standing there, training like a rooster. <laughs> all, he you needs, know, all, he, all he needs is the, is the comb, the coxcomb. Uh, a hat, you know, with the big, uh, an orange coxcomb to match his hair. Or like that, remember, who was it? Who, who was it? The, Howie, Howie Mandel. Howie Mandel, when he used to put the, 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 the he used to blow up the, uh, the, uh, the, the plastic glove, put it on his head like it with the coxcomb. Oh, blow up the glove and then put it over his head. Yeah, put it on and over his head. <laughs> it looked like a rooster. You know, I've never seen him do that. Well, now he's on... Uh, America's Got Talent or yeah, something? Yeah, or, so. or Amer yeah, with Simon. No, Simon is... Um, American Idol, or is that Howard Stern? America's Got Talent. I get him. I just saw it off Channel Four. Simon yeah. Cowell Actually, is Simon America's Cowell. Got Talent. Yeah. So American Idol must be the one with the. Uh, he's the probably got that one too. Howard I don't know. Stern. I know he's. Is I that know, on TV? I, I know S Simon is on one. Yeah, they're both uh, very similar think. shows. They're both on TV. I, I don't watch those shows. I know. I, I think Simon Cal used to have America. Yeah. I mean, uh, American Idol. Because the singing that all was show. the singing all sounds the same. Yeah. I also watched Shark Tank last night. Yeah. No, I, I I I just watch documentaries, History Channel, Travel well, Channel, Science Channel. Well, yeah, but Shark Tank, Channel. Shark Tank could teach you. Uh, exactly what happened with uh, the movie Tucker when he couldn't get his car built because other people wanted to get a, on his board of directors and direct the, 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 the show and, and it's not him being charged. 
And what happens on Shark Tank, some, you got a product, you got how to sell it or whatever and make it and blah, blah, blah. And you go there and you're begging them for money. And they want too much power. They want too much control. Like the one guy last night, he says, okay, I'll give you, I want 50% of your business. And but, I'll give you the money. Well, that's what the music industry does, exactly. does to the kids. That's what they, uh, you know, the that's, kids. That's, that's capitalism, man. They, they got, you got to read the fine print in that contract. They, they want, they want, listen, if you, if you don't get at least, <clears throat> worst case scenario, 51% control yeah, of your right. product or your, what you do. Your business, yeah. Right. If it's an agent, he's not entitled to any more than 10%. You're busting your ass. You're the one that's going on the road working. Ten yeah. percent is good for an agent, but uh, venture. You're talking about venture capital, people who put up the money right. to manufacture your product, and then you got to worry about your patent. You got to worry about, you know, corporation. Well, that's what happened to one girl last night. Steel. She, she had these gloves and stuff that you can put on when you work out, right. and socks. Right. And uh, the guy said, the one guy said, hey, anybody can do that. You're going out there against anybody who can do the same thing you're doing. How the hell are you going to meet that challenge? So it wasn't unique enough. Right. Well, it didn't have a patent either. It wasn't patented. You know. And she's yeah. going to put, she's putting $80,000 into the company and... Yeah. Wants money from them, then they, so they, they ain't gonna do that. They advertise uh, these uh, the, this website company that with a website that specializes in uh, um, making your patent, your invention, George Foreman, a reality, not patent. Making your invention, it's for George, inventors. George Foreman. You know George Foreman. Yeah. Um, didn't give the Salton Company an answer for for quite some time. He just let that that grill just sit around his house. That they they wanted him to oh, yeah. endorse it, you know, put a signature on it, and he just let it lie around. His daughter, I think, is the one that kept on bugging him to do it. Oh. You know. Um, but they will steal your invention, a corporation. It, it, it's very tricky. It really is. My parents would have put us to bed without supper for such rudeness. But I guess at the military school Trump attended, they didn't teach manners, of course. His budget plan hurts those who can least afford it. No dinner? No, I mean, usually no dessert is punishment for a kid. But no dinner? Well, wow. Well, well, anyway, yeah. I get the point. Okay. Lo uh, gastronomy. You want to partake in a little gastronomy, right? Sure, sure, okay. sure. We're going to break for lunch. You will now be joined by How to Defeat a Conservative Bible Verses, followed by promo for Newsletter Censored. And hopefully the um hopefully the newsletter censored team will uh be back together again yeah. uh some of them had to take a, a, a leave of absence for medical reasons hopefully it'll be back and uh, it will get out in a timely fashion mm. all right we'll see you Mm. After lunch.
This is James P. Madonna of Mega Life 21 Hard Hitting Podcasts, Holistic Health Talk, and Progressive Discussions. I want to talk about the very foundation of our entire organization, the newsletter that was founded by my co-host and mentor, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisman in 1977. And that newsletter is called Censored. Newsletter Censored is truth and news fighting censorship and conservative propaganda. We believe we are living in the end times and you need Newsletter Censored. Newsletter Censored per- provides the kind of truth that most people are afraid to hear. Can you handle it? Newsletter Censored is for the independent, critical, free thinker with an open mind. Besides the reading of Censored, Newsletter Censored also has The God Project and How to Defeat a Conservative. There is nothing in the mainstream media or the press like Newsletter Censored. So simply go to www.newslettercensored.com and with your gift to support this work, get your free annual subscription to the newsletter that started it all in 1977, Newsletter Censored. You need Newsletter Censored. That's www.newslettercensored.com. Greetings. This is James P. Madonna of Mega Life 21 Hard Hitting Podcasts, Holistic Health Talk, and Progressive Discussions. I want to talk about the very foundation of our entire organization, the newsletter that was founded by my co-host and mentor, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisman in 1977. And that newsletter is called Censored. Newsletter Censored is truth and news fighting censorship and conservative propaganda. We believe we are living in the end times and you need Newsletter Censored. Newsletter Censored provides the kind of truth that most people are afraid to hear. Can you handle it? Newsletter Censored is for the independent, critical, free thinker with an open mind. Besides the reading of Censored, Newsletter Censored also has The God Project and How to Defeat a Conservative. There is nothing in the mainstream media or the press like Newsletter Censored. So simply go to www.newslettercensored.com and with your gift to support this work, get your free annual subscription to the newsletter that started it all in 1977, Newsletter Censored. You need Newsletter Censored. That's www.newslettercensored.com. Okay, we're back. We're back, and we are partaking in another Yinling traditional lager craft beer, micro brew to perfection. Yes, Yinling, America's oldest brewery since 1829, or is it 1828? 29, I believe. Yeah. Hey, uh-huh. when we started the show, the, the bogus car alarm went off. Now we're back from lunch and it's going off again. I don't hear you. What is that? Woo, 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 woo. That's police. No, no, it's not a police car. Yeah, it's somewhere on the, on the... Police siren. I don't even hear that. 
Remember the, remember the, uh, the, the low-budget horror movie with the giant ants? Yes, them. Them, and they had that woo-woo-woo, remember? They were making that noise. <laughs> Tonight on Svengoolie is the bride of Frankenstein. Oh, really? Yeah. What is that, sci-fi? It's on... Uh, Channel 33 on Optimum, which is... I have Fios. I have uh, Verizon Fios. No, yeah, well, I don't know where it you is have there. A but it's on 33 where you got, you know, all the old programs, Andy Griffith. Yeah. Now, the, now the Wolfman was Lon Chaney Jr. Right? That was Lon Chaney Jr. And I know Peter Cushing, not personally, uh, Peter Laurie, yeah, uh, John yeah. Carradine, Carradine, the the, fa the Faja of the the late David Carradine. Mm -hmm. These were all uh, Bela Lugosi, of course, Boris Karloff. These are all people that were typecast in Hollywood to to uh, only get work in horror films. Only horror films. Mm -hmm. And some of them, like Bela Lugosi, were very frustrated because they wanted to do other things. Yep. Uh, dramatic roles, perhaps. Not too many people were allowed the privilege of going outside of their box. Right. Like, for instance, God rest his soul, Robin Williams was an excellent dramatic actor as well as comedian, so he did serious roles and he did comedy. Not too many people um, have done that. Leslie Nielsen, who also is deceased, Leslie Nielsen started out doing serious movies and then ended up doing comedy. You know, a Naked Gun. And Naked Gun. I, oh, I love the theme song. Da 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 Remember, he, he did a... Um, um, Priscilla Presley was in uh, one of his Naked Gun movies. Oh, yeah? Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, oh, and he did a movie that was a spoof on The Exorcist called Repossessed. And Linda Blair was in it. I never saw it. I never saw the movie. I got to look it up and see if YouTube has uh, f uh, the full movie. Hmm. Repossessed. And Leslie Nielsen played The, uh, the Exorcist. Cool. <laughs> Repossessed. I mean, it's like cool, buddy. Da, 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 All right, go ahead. Advocates for minority communities say Donald Trump's proposed budget answers the question he posed to Black Americans during his campaign. What the hell do you have to lose? <laughs> Oh my God, oh, help me, Spock. <laughs> His $4.1 trillion spending plan for the budget year, beginning in October the 1st, generally makes deep cuts in safety net programs. Of course. Including Medicaid. Oh yes. The Children's Health Insurance Program. And Social Security's disability program. What about Planned Parenthood? Mustn't forget that. Here is the reality. Many poor black families, and brown families, and Asian families, and indigenous families will be devastated by the budget. Hey, the po' folk. Even, even our, our homeless veterans our poor veterans who he devastated. said he's going to help oh, ba -bo -ba -ba, baby hold on you're he. going to be succeeding winning so much you're gonna say President Trump please hold back please stop we can't handle it anymore all this prosperity all this prosperity all right he's all right. gonna put American steel back into our spines Meanwhile, it was Russian steel. <laughs> the White House said its budget would put the country back on track for a healthy economy. 
yeah, on track towards uh, towards an oncoming uh, locomotive. <laughs> yeah, you need a tunnel and a light on the end <laughs> coming at you. We're not going to measure compassion by the amount of money that we spend, but by the number of people that we help. Yeah, the number of people that we help. Uh, yeah. uh, uh, is there fine print that only says uh, the top 2%? Well, that's what White House Budget Director Mick Mulvaney said this past week. Critics decry the priorities in Trump's budget, which Congress is unlikely to pass as it is submitted. Still, it will serve as a guidepost for what the White House wants lawmakers to deliver to the President. It is an attack of unimaginable cruelty on the most vulnerable among us, the youngest, the oldest, the poorest, the hard-working people who need a little help to gain or hang on to a decent middle-class life, Hillary Clinton said. A decent middle-class life. Does she, does she realize what that is? That's not somebody who's uh, living week to week or paycheck to paycheck. Trump's budget would slash Medicaid and the Children's Health Insurance Program which provide health insurance for millions of poor families by 616 billion over the next decade. A decent middle class life is a damn good life. It's not somebody who's living on a tight budget, that's for sure. It would cut the food stamp program by $191 billion over the next decade. Yeah. And the temporary assistance for needy families program by $22 billion. Yeah. Uh, you know, mil the military budget, almost 60% of it. You know, I mean, uh, so much more important, I guess, than, than 2% of social services. Great nations are known by how they care for the old and the vulnerable, <laughs> and by how much they can take away from them to give to their wealthy friends. Yeah, and, and turn and turn the and turn the uh, the poor and the and the and the elderly into soil and green. Several people pointed to the targeting of the Education Department for a 13% cut as troubling. That will undoubtedly hurt our most vulnerable children, especially those from low-income and working-class black families who rely on access to special education programs. All minorities across the board period. Well-trained teachers, smaller class sizes, literacy grants, and before and after school programs, all of which will be at risk for cuts or elimination. The head of the Congressional Hispanic Caucus said Trump's budget waste billions of dollars on a costly and ineffective border wall and deportation force while proposing cuts to programs that have been essential to helping Hispanic families. The budget seeks 2.6 billion dollars for border security technology, including money to design and build the wall. You mustn't forget about that wall, especially since um, since the uh, drug trafficking lights uh, prefers tunneling. Don't put that in your mouth, mouth, mm -hmm. mouth, 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 mouth. I ain't near it. Uh, I ain't near it. Yeah, they prefer tunneling, but he says walls work. Well, they do work to take money from us. 
they because Mexico ain't gonna pay for the wall no they made it very clear okay yeah the stupid wall the stupid wall whatever the yeah. fucking wall that that's what the president said of Mexico this stupid fucking wall he kept on telling everybody that Mexico was gonna pay for it yeah well in Mexico ain't they called it a racist wall and you see what the Pope said oh the Pope when, when the Pope met with Trump he didn't look happy Pope Francis had had a really upset look on his face compared to when he was with Barack Obama smiling from ear to ear yeah of course <coughs> excuse me <coughs> did Bernie Sanders ever meet Pope Francis when he yeah did Pope Francis um, I think he did endorse him but not I don't think he I don't think he went public I didn't think he publicly endorsed Bernie Sanders and I don't know if he endorsed anybody. No, you know what? You're right. I don't you think know? Pope Francis really endorsed anybody. Trump said, I was firing Comey anyway. Who does this? A wife beater? A bully? First, the indefensible act Next, the self-serving lies that soon unravel. Finally, the threat to the victim. You better not tell anyone if you know what's good for you. He's like, um, he's like a mafioso. It's time to amend the Constitution and eliminate the Electoral College. It was put in place because the founders did not trust the people. And the superdelegates of the Democratic Party. It was a method to overturn the election in the event the people chose a Donald Trump. Instead, it backfired. The founders were wrong not to trust the people. The Trump voters were wrong to trust him. I read an article where it said that uh, the mail-in ballot is, is the most uh, honest, reliable form of ballot. I would think so. A paper ballot. Everybody has one. Right? You no. Know. <clears throat> right? You just, you have a form. You uh, take a, a pen. Sure. Unless you're stupid enough to, to vote in pencil. You take a, 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 a nice black pen unless you like the blue one and you when you check off who you want you put an X in the box why well, how difficult could that be and then you put your paper in the box you put you put the you um, you sign it right. um, you have your uh, name and address so mm -hmm. they can look you up to make sure you're a registered voter and you're in the book you signed the book. You know, uh... Well, I mean, I mean, like, let, let's say if... For, for people that mail in their ballots. That's what, that's what the article is about. Okay. The mail-in paper ballot is the most reliable, simple, honest form of voting. Yeah. I would say so. You know. Because if you, if you got it... The, the computer is just a... Could be rigged. It's just a piece of light. But, but it could and flip. It could be changed. It, it could be rigged. Whatever, you know. So that's not safe. That's not uh, secure. No. But if you got if you got a form in front of you. Right. And, hey. And you're and you're and you're checking. Joe Fafando, she came in this afternoon, he signed the thing, he signed the thing over there. Yeah, you, you thing. look at this, he voted. You check the box. You Is check it? the box. You, you go, oh, there's three questions. Uh, on this election, let's see. Uh, this one is an environmental question. Blah 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 blah. I yes, oh, no yes. Boom. Sign it. Mail it. That's it. One two three. Just as fast as going into a booth, except. And, and then when you want to prove, except the, you, you, you take can't, it out. You can't rig it. 
because you're filling it out. Right, and when you when you you count it, you count it. It's in your hand. It's paper. It's tangible. It's tangible. Like this blackthorn sh good luck shillelagh. Yeah. It's tangible. Yeah. And when it cracks the coconut, the skull of a right wing bastard, it's also tangible. <clears throat> Donald Trump has built the wall already. But he has built it around himself to protect him from uncomfortable questions. Oh, he, he, he definitely evades uncomfortable questions. His lack of understanding of the workings of the government <laughs> continues to be the opposite of a successful administration. He is afraid of having a press conference because he cannot explain his lack of knowledge. It is shameful that he did not have the courage to fire FBI Director James Comey but left it to others, completely disrespectful of the office and the country. Will he never learn how to govern? Well, Comey and Barack Obama's uh, 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 administration, Loretta Lynch, the both of them were kind of spineless jellyfish. Jellyfish? You know what I mean? Jelly bean? Jellyfish. Loretta Lynch, Comey. Uh, well, we'll see what Comey has to say on Thursday. Okay. Well, he's going to spill the beans? Well, if he has them. Well, he's fired. He's he fired. Has he, has not, he, has not, he has nothing. I mean, he's out of the, um, the governmental job, so now, you know, yes. he, could, he could say whatever his heart desires. Well, he supposedly has notes. Ah. See? Yeah, you can't go off half cocked and just like shoot your mouth off with no proof. Right. Prove all things. Hold fast that that which is good. Oh, by the way, that's the new Progressive Discussions Facebook page front cover. Mm. Prove all things. Hold fast that which is good. Thessalonians, one or two. Five. Five. Thessalonians. Five Thessalonians. Twenty-one. Five twenty-one. Five twenty-one. Something like that. Yeah. Thessalonians. I'm sure if you Google it, it'll come up. Oh, sure. I think the time has come to seriously question this man's mental health. <laughs> the really? The, the time has come? He is either the most delusional adult we have ever seen or the biggest baby the president has ever had, presidency has ever had. Well, he he definitely takes tantrums. Can you imagine him giving a eulogy and one sentence in he, in he goes off and starts bemoaning how the media is mistreating him? I hear his attention span is very, very short. Small, very small. His uh, commencement speech at the U.S. Coast Guard Academy is another case of this deplorable behavior. Four months in, I think he's had enough. Yeah, how could, how could you how could you be the master at making the deal when your attention span is so short? Don't you have to like negotiate with people and talk to them and listen to them and see where the money goes? Talk actually to converse, not talk at them, but actually converse and negotiate. Yeah. During the campaign, he railed about Hillary Clinton could not be trusted with classified information. He willingly gave it up to the Russians. No arm twisting needed. Pictures taken were by the Russians. What happened to put America first? 
finally, what is the great love affair with Russia? Doesn't Trump realize that they are not our friends? I just don't get it. Well, how many friends, uh, like uh, Henry Kissinger said when he he worked for the, uh, when David Frost interviewed him, we do not have uh, many friends in the world, if any. We have very few friends. The United States is not popular. No. They'll take our money. If, in fact, this is an unnecessary witch hunt, why doesn't he give the investigators whatever information is needed and speed up the process? Right. And we get into onto making America great again. Well, <laughs> oh, you know where we got that winning thing that from Charlie Sheen. Remember when Charlie Sheen had a little controversy with the hookers and everything, prostitutes and and uh, a little didn't like he get fired? Drugs. Uh, yeah, but he. Wow. Yeah, but you know it is very possible that the statements he made about Hollywood and about the producer of the show or whatever he or whatever he said about Hollywood I don't want to go into detail but it's very possible he was being accurate mm. you know you know that that really uh, amazes me is how if you tell the truth about the people who sign your paycheck if you if you say things that have to be true and and they don't like it they Bye -bye. let you they let you go yeah. But then again, we have a First Amendment of the Constitution. They chanted, Lock her up! Lock her up! For Hillary Clinton's misuse of emails. Now, their choice has attempted to interfere with FBI investigations of Flynn. About all the information that came out about Deborah Wasserman uh, Schultz, I mean, uh, they, nobody gets locked up who's in bed with the oligarch. It seems nobody, nobody really justice is never served. Uh, and uh, the Russians. Uh, what the hell? Yeah, that's what I say. What the Flynn, hell? Flynn, okay, that I ended it with that. Errol Flynn? Given American secret information to the Russians, and every day brings disturbing events, this is no reality show. There are no consequences, real consequences. Let us all join in saying, You're fired! Well, he... Did, did he try to, like, uh, copyright that? When he was working, when he was doing uh, Celebrity Apprent Apprentice? No. Uh, that was just a joke. Somebody said he was trying to, he wanted a copyright. You're fired. And every time someone said you're fired, he, he would have to get paid a royalty of some kind. It's like a Celebrity Apprentice. Uh, that might have been comedy. Probably. Probably. Now. I would like to respond to this writer by reminding him that for seven years the GOP stonewalled every and all policies President Obama and the Democrats tried to initiate. Seven years, not eight? Well, seven years, yes. All right, all right, whatever. Yeah, all right, yes, that's true. The Republicans refused to work with their Democratic counterparts on Obamacare. They refused to work, period. We could have had a viable, workable health care system in place today, if they had. So, the writer gives the Democrats an F. I would have the GOP members fired for their inactivity during the past seven plus years. The American people who are the employers who are paying the GOP Congress and Senate, yeah, yeah, 
that's pretty accurate. They sh should have the ability to vote on uh, a form of impeachment of a congressman or senator, perhaps. They were paid, They're not, but they, did nothing. They, they, they were totally unproductive. For the they American did nothing public. For the little bit of hours they worked. They mm -hmm. didn't. They, but they obstructed. They didn't work. Their people obviously do not care. Because they have theirs. They have the best of everything. And they are not working for we the people. Nor mm. do they care about we the people. They only care about the uh, top Two percent that stuffed their pockets. Mm -hmm. James Clapper. <laughs> Clapper. Clapper. Clap on. Clap off. The Clapper. former director of national intelligence said on Sunday that U.S. institutions are under assault by Donald Trump as evidenced by Trump's firing of FBI Director James Comey last week. Clapper said on CNN's State of the Union that the developments of the past week are very bothersome, very disturbing to me. Trump fired Comey in the midst of the FBI's investigation into possible collusion between the Trump campaign officials and the Russian government in last year's presidential election. I think in many ways our institutions are under assault both externally and that's the big news here is the Russian interference with our election system. Hmm. And I think, as well, our institutions are under assault internally. When CNA's host, Jake Tapper, asked if he meant they were under assault by the president, Clapper responded, exactly. Hmm. The Founding Fathers, in their genius, created a system of co-equal branches of government and a built-in system of checks and balances. And I feel as though that is under assault and is eroding. He said he hopes senators and members of Congress from both parties will examine their consciences and decide how to respond to what the White House is doing. I hope they'll speak up. In a separate appearance on ABC's This Week, Clapper said Comey's firing is a victory for Russia. What's unfolded now here, the lead is, is the investigation about potential collusion between Russia and Trump campaign has been removed. So the Russians have to consider this as Another victory on the scoreboard for them. Well, Trump is um, is like uh, Vladimir Putin's bitch, right? <laughs> Puppet. Yeah, well, we don't know why yet. We don't have the facts. Right. Jack. Okay. We don't have the facts yet. Yeah. I thought we were going to have a lot of facts. The way uh, WikiLeaks and Anonymous were putting out all those online articles about how they got the goods on uh, all these people. Oh, yeah. And nothing ever came out, and nothing ever brought anybody down. Exactly. Nothing happened. And that's how it goes. And it's like, why? What did they. Are, 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 is we, are WikiLeaks and Anonymous becoming uh, as ineffective as the Republican Congress? 
I mean, I would if, think so. If they're supposedly everywhere, and they know how to hack, and they know how to get any information they choose, then how come all the scoundrels got away with what they did? Every one of them. It happens every time. There's uh, mm -hmm. there's always maybe one person who pays a price, but the rest. Poor Bernie Sanders. They scurry off to their holes in the wall. Poor little Bernie Bird. He got screwed over. There was no justice there. <laughs> I mean, granted, he's doing great with the Our Revolution organization with um, uh, Jeff Weaver and um, uh, Jill. No oh, Jill? No, no Jill. No, I don't know what's wrong with Jill. I don't know why Jill hasn't unified the progressive movement, you know, and become a part of it. Uh, no, the um, the black uh, girl, the black woman, the, oh, well, yeah, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, what's yeah. her name again? She worked for in, in his campaign. Yeah, I know what you mean, but I don't know. Yeah, her. she's she's a great speaker, aggressive public speaker. Um, yeah. But but what I'm saying is it's 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 picking up momentum yeah not like not like the Bernie Sanders 2016 campaign but it's picking up momentum in terms of uh, online of uh, uh, live stream videos uh, um, unfortunately not a hell of a lot of people show up at at their rallies, but uh, there are candidates. I think that might be their focus. Huh. Trying to get more progressive candidates nationwide on a local and state level elected. Well, you can't get progressives elected, I'm telling you, as long as money is involved. Well, if you take money from, from the, the corporation, the big boys, yeah. And 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 uh, you turn around and you become uh, a superhero with spandex and a cape, and and when a big P on 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 the front the front that stands for progressive, you know, I mean, uh, you owe them favors. That's the point. You owe them favors. It's like. Um, like what I was talking about at the beginning of the show about uh, Democrats in New Jersey who are calling themselves progressives. Mm -hmm. You know, and they're well, you not. You see what happened with Clinton? She's a center-right person. Yeah. And as uh, Bar uh, Bernie became more competitive with her, she shifted to the progressive side and gave us all Oh yeah, I want free college. I want free, free uh, 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 schooling for children. Yeah. Ah, yeah, universal health care. Yeah, right. She went over to right. the other side. And a lot, and right, and and today, uh, many Democrats are uh, frivolously uh, and loosely using the word progressive. Right. It's like it's like confusing a, a, a radical with an extremist. There's nothing wrong with the word radical. <clears throat> a progressive uh, independent can be called radical. You know, uh, reform somebody that wants to reform, reform a broken, corrupt system uh -huh. can be called a radical. Uh -huh. There's nothing bad about that. Extremism. Well, right did it all the time. You know, Try to get people back to the roots of things. The grassroots revolution is radical in a positive way. It is progressive. Just think of the word pro progressive from the word progress. That's you, a progressive. You're Someone not going to get progress. Wants to make progress. Right. Where a Republican wants to turn back the clock. Or leave things as they are. Or leave things as they are. That's correct. They don't like to. They don't like to make improvements. 
No. Well, okay. they don't want they don't want the people to have any power. Well, that too. The only power they like is to get, get them to vote for them, keep them in power. Yeah. That's all they're well, they, 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 they're they, not. They don't run on things to help people. No. They run on to get power and keep it. That's what they do. Look right. at Mitch McConnell. Because of whom? They, some years. Because of whom they serve. Yeah. Because of the people they serve. Oh my God, Mitch McConnell, decades. He's still senator, and uh, that's another thing. All all the dirty tricks. Uh, uh, in campaigning, like uh, gerrymandering, uh, any form of voter suppression, I mean, how ridiculous is that for a, 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 your average American citizen, let's say, in a poor neighborhood, to have to get a voter ID that he has to pay for, he mm -hmm. or she has to pay for it. Your, 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 the ID you get from motor vehicles should be enough driver's license with your photo on it. You have to pay for that too. You have to you have to show your birth certificate to get that. What could be more valid <clears throat> than that? You don't need additional voter ID. You sh you should be automatically legally able to vote just by turn, having turn 18. Right, just by having that ID. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, so anyway, that's it. Right. That's it. That's enough for today. For the, uh, that's enough for this week. Thank you for joining us for this week's Progressive Discussions. Uh, have a safe week. We'll see you next time. Um, I will be... Um, I, won't, I will not be around from... July 11th to the 18th. I will be in San Diego. Ah! Yes. Staying with a friend of mine. So, anyway. So, if there's a Saturday that happens to fall... No, actually, there is. If I'm, uh, the, uh, uh, That's May. The 11th is a Tuesday. So, that Saturday would be 12, 13, would be 14, the second 15. the second Saturday of July of July. That would be the second Saturday of July. I'm talking about around. July now. Yeah, July. July eleventh to the eighteenth. Anyway, we'll see it. There's a Saturday though. All right. There's a Saturday there. Yes. Probably the second Saturday of July.